Thanks, Tommy. Thanks for joining us today for the Jazz Muse family. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. My pleasure, man. It's a, I'm excited about this. Awesome. Us too. For those who don't know, uh, Tommy is a world-class musician, drummer. Uh, I mean, you're a four-time best-selling author, uh, three-time Grammy winner. Uh, you play it all. I, I, I mean, genre-wise, I just can't even put you in a box. And honestly, one of the main things I just want to drive home to people, to me, you're one of the most honest musicians I see out there. And we'll get into what that means, uh, at least to me, but I really want to push that as a theme throughout today. So, um, but to, to get started, to really kind of get our audience on the right foot, can I wanted to start with your father and talk about Sonny. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about him and his influence on you? Because I think that's a great place to start for you know mentorship and, and, and that perspective. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great place to start. The, um, you know, I was uh, uh, incredibly lucky to have um, uh, Sonny Igo be my father, <laughs> you know, to, to put it bluntly. Um, uh, great musician, uh, but more importantly, a great man. And um, a true, uh, uh, a true member of the silent era, you know, I, uh, born uh, in between world wars, just before the depression, um, you know, lived through that, you know, and they didn't complain about anything <laughs> like at all. And, um, uh, you know, uh, he had a, a work ethic that um, uh, made a huge uh, lasting impact upon me. Um, I mean, this guy played uh, until, uh, until he died. And I mean that like literally, he played right up until he died. Um, There's a couple stories I could tell you about that. Um, but he was um, he was as devoted to the uh, craft and art as uh, anyone could ever be. And that was what I was modeled in my house. Um, that if you're gonna do this, you do it all the way and you give your heart and soul uh, as so many great artists have before us to this art. And um, um, and don't disrespect it, you know. So um, there's a that's that's that formed a lot of my mindset, you know. And you know, I grew up hearing stories that um, a lot of guys don't. Well, a lot of guys don't ever hear um, of you know uh, being on the road with uh, you know Woody Herman in 1951 and being a member of Lionel Hampton's Sextet, one of the first integrated bands in the world that went down south with, and, and the shit my dad saw firsthand, uh, 1948 with Benny Goodman, you know, and, you know, it, it, you know, and he was, he was one of those guys, man. It's, and it's too bad too. He was reticent to tell his stories. He just wasn't, wasn't one of those guys. He doesn't, he wasn't one of those me, me, me on I, I, I guys. He just wasn't mad. He's like, he would sit around and was like, gather around, you young pups. I'm going to tell you some stories. That's just not who he was, you know. I had to drag that shit out of him, you know. And um, and then once he, you know, once I, it, it just made a really lasting impact on me, the, the wisdom and, uh, and devotion he had to jazz and to the arts and to the craft and being a great musician, being a great human. Uh, so that was my home life. You know, that was, and I was very lucky to have it. It's awesome. And, and so that influenced both your playing, obviously he, he influenced your playing as well, but what you're getting at, and I think that's something that I've noticed about yourself, because we've kind of gotten to know each other over the internet, not even meeting face to face, was you're always coming from a place of values. You're not coming from a place of just the playing, but that the playing is backed first, like you said, your dad, you described your dad saying, first, he's a great person you know he's a great human he's a great man like so do you kind of approach everything from that value mindset and 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 where does that come from him as well is that is that because because I, I don't see a lot of people modeling that mindset they're you're, no, you're coming from uh, a deeper place no it's not coming from a, uh, well I think that is the deepest place that you could possibly come from I think you know honoring your last name is the first thing you should think of you know and um that's how I, uh, well, that's just how I'm baked anyway. 
I'm just baked that way. This is, that's just who I am, you know? And it's easy to be that way when you have a great mentor and a, and a model right in front of your face, you know? And we were one of those, you know, mostly musicians, and this is, you know, this is not any news. You know, mostly musicians who have musicians as fathers, they don't get along. And a lot of times the sons or daughters, they don't go into the music business and there's friction and like whatever and stuff. Cause you know, you got two, you know, artists in the house and you know, the young buck doesn't want to listen to the old stud and da da da, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's always just like, kind of like, there could be like a friction. We never had any of that. My dad, I, there was a rule if I wanted to learn, I had to go to him. I had to ask for a lesson because in my house, education was, a, was, was, uh, uh, was a gift, was a, a, a thing of value. It wasn't, you had to ask to be educated. You had to go and you had to show me how to show him that you were thirsty. And that also had a big impact on me. So if I was down there screwing up, he would knock him down and like, you know, straighten me out. <laughs> you know, I had to go, Hey dad, why does it sound like crap? <laughs> you know, but right. I had to ask him like, what am I, what am I completely blowing here, man? And then he would go, okay, let's take a look. You know, it was that kind of thing. And that kind of environment also showed, you know, that, you know, the student had to show thirst. Had to, you got to want it. It wasn't just given to you. You had to ask for it. And um, that made a big impact on me, too. Um, so, you know, the idea of, uh, you know, it's coming from when you said it's coming from a place of, uh, you know, deep respect. And it's also coming from a place of values. All right. So I talk about this a lot on my page. And uh, that's why I love your page, too. Um, uh, because your page is never, and believe me, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't respect your page. Believe me. I, I laugh my ass off at your page because it is so damn funny. And my dad would have laughed his ass off at it too, because we're funny creatures. You know, people who play jazz or music or whatever the hell. It's like, what, look at us. Come on. I know. Funny. I know. It's, it's like I look at drummer like so I did a thing uh, lately for and on uh I you probably it was a drummer esque thing it was very drummer centric and I called it um and I called it shit on my snare okay now it was hashtag shit on my snare drum so there's a there's a there's a thing it was a fad lately where you know you know drummers gotta like I gotta put crap on my snare drum like like this so here's like a gaff tape yeah right? they just leave like something to and make some sound on, on it, it or yeah yeah right here it is I'm gonna put it on here. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, or, or a pencil or a wallet <laughs> or a wallet. Well, a wallet is like what we always used to put. It's like, it's like the oldest tradition in the world. You put your wallet on the snare to deaden it out. Right. right. But now we have like goat hooves and organic camel gonads or whatever the hell it is. And it's like, you know, and I'm like looking at it and it's just like, and it's just funny. Come on. You spend like, like, like you look over here, like, look at the snare drum. Look at that. See that? Like, look at the snare drum. See, look at this thing. See, that's like, you know, like a thousand dollars like perfectly exquisite it's a work of art crafted. yeah it's a work of art it's like an artist that made it yeah it's like uh low mass logs and you know the bingo wood on the outside with a layer of ash inside you know right right then, right stuff you're never yeah, even gonna now, see <laughs> now, now i'm gonna now i'm gonna put all this crap on it <laughs> right think of the guy who designed it he sees like someone put their coffee <laughs> He's like, he's like, ah! he's like freaking out. You know, it's just, it's just funny. It's just funny. It's like, so I, like, I, I did a whole series of like, you know, like just ridiculous. Like the last one was I put a Lego's uh, Death Star, like 5,000 piece Death Star on, on the stairs. Of, the and of course, and of course the people without a sense of humor get all, oh my God, he's making fun of us. Right. It's, like, what are you right. just, it's like look you know we are we are a funny quirky little cult of people and we have to be able to giggle at ourselves like i saw the thing i think you guys posted today oh my god it was so great uh it was chick korea with a headband and yeah. he had, right and he was like he's like when well, you got a jazz gig at eight you got to fight cobra kai at nine right it was like right exactly. i mean come on I mean, look, it's Chick Corea's birthday. How many people are just going to be like, Chick Corea's the greatest, which he is. But I mean, like, if, God, if you, yeah. and you know what? Chick Corea's probably got a better sense of humor than the people getting pissed off about the photo of him. I mean, 
my, props to my brother for coming up with that at uh, seven thirty yeah, in the morning. Absolutely great. Yeah. I mean that's improv, right. but you know, yeah. that's, just, that's the other thing is, is I want to talk about your uh, your meme page is that there's nothing at all ever mean spirited about your page. You're not you don't do anything mean spirited. That's like mean spirited yeah. is if you took a picture of somebody and attacked who they are, mm -hmm. or attacked the the uh, the way they play, uh, attacked attack them just attack like but when you when you lived as long as chick korea has and has seen as many fashion statements as chick korea has through the 60s and the 70s and then you've got a, like a thing like a picture it's like come on man i mean i look at pictures of myself with a mullet and i'm rolling on the floor i mean we actually thought that looked good yeah we, honestly in the 80s thought we looked good and i I just think that's hysterical, you know? Yeah. And, and to what you're trying to get at, I, I think, well, I mean, the fact, like you said, like the fact that we're even here today, you know, we, we would only even have connected if we didn't share these values unspokenly. Like, that's a big yeah. part about it. I didn't, we don't get on and I don't talk about how or why we do things in, in a lot of cases. And it's, I think the audience that comes to our page and stays, the ones that I want to stay, I mean, I'm okay if people leave, but the ones that stay, the one that I want to create this family community vibe are the people that get it. And they get it unspokenly that we're, we have a certain aim. We all can share in this. There is no need to point at a person, but it's more like, let's comment on these things or let's talk about these things that are happening. We can, if we can't talk about it openly, you know, what are we doing? So. Well, it's also, you know, we, if you can't laugh at the, you know, we've devoted ourselves to, you know, people have devoted themselves to being musicians or players or, you know, classical. Well, it doesn't matter what genre it is. You know, there's some funny shit that goes on. And it's like, and also, like, when my, one of my favorite things is when you do the practice memes, like, the, the, when you do the practice, like, like, the things that we do in practice. <laughs> you know, come on, man. It's so true. Like, all those things, you know, it's like, you know, we just, like, kill ourselves to, like, you know. Well, and it's yeah. like, I show them to my students because I'm like, you know, that's, it's, 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 listen, I've always believed that humor is the most powerful tool to get people to look at themselves, mm -hmm. you know? And it's, and when you use like really beautiful humor, it's also just like, you know, the laugh at the, you know, uh, you know, with, with a wistful happy, not laugh like as in condemning, but laugh because look at the brother and sisterhood that we have, you know, of people who have devoted themselves to this. And there are some unifying, interesting little quirks. And those funny little quirks, I think, are highlighted beautifully on your page. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, that's to me, like, and, and having done this every day for five years with my brother, I mean, that's what it's all about. When I hear from an artist that they were on the road and they, they woke up at for lobby call at four and they saw the meme and they just laughed. Like I wasn't there, but that moment, the fact that they had that moment is means I did my job in a sense and I'm yeah. doing it for myself. But, but yeah. at the same time, like it's, that's the most gratifying part about all of it to hear that it's received and that, that right. is if I, if I created something that made somebody at a lobby call at 4 a.m. laugh, I would feel really, really good that I gained them that because I've been in enough 4 a.m. lobby calls to know that nothing makes me laugh. Right? So, <laughs> right, you're dead. You. <laughs> you probably didn't go to sleep. You're probably recovering from the previous night gig. and Yeah, yeah. if you've slept at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I, I think we both share the same sensibility. And and I just want to, now that we've kind of gone into, I think this is a great transition. I had one of our, one of my friends, someone I play with a lot, uh, Drew Tucker, he's a vibraphonist. Um, he told me when we, when I told him I was going to be interviewing with you, he said, uh, I don't have any questions, but I just want to let him know that I respect the way he handles the garbage comments on his feed. So what I kind of wanted to get into was just, you know, this whole world of social media is, it's been a very interesting learning experience for myself and for a ton of musicians starting to use it, especially in recent times, as like their main way of communicating who they are and what they're about. It's their main voice. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you've done it in a very, like I said earlier, an honest way. You don't mm -hmm. shy away from expressing how you feel. You don't shy away from someone coming at you with maybe something that's aggressive 
or intense or, or contrary to what you believe. So can you just talk about how you approach criticism and, and all of these things? Because I even have a great quote, you, you know, you talk about coming into your house, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would just love to hear your approach of how you approach criticism and basically social media as a platform. Well, I don't, I, um, I don't approach criticism in any way. Uh, criticism is, is something that I can't control and don't want to. Um, anybody can say anything about me that they want to. As for example, on this interview, people will have opinions and stuff and they're welcome to them. I mean, I'm as free speech as they come. Um, and nobody is, uh, uh, nobody's going to be controlled and you can say whatever you got to say. I had a very interesting moment with my kids when they were, when they were younger, actually. Um, and they were, you know, they were, I think they were in middle school or something like that. And, you know, and middle school is a tough time, you know, middle school is a tough time for kids. You know, it's like that transitional, you're not a teen and you're not a kid. It's, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's weird, man. It's like, you're. You're like this, like weird middle. That's why they call them middle. You're like not, you're not in high school. You're not in elementary. You're not like a little kid. You're not, you know, you're not riding tricycles anymore, and you can't, you know, it's a weird time. And you know, it's a lot of like uh, self reflection and a lot of vulnerability. And I think it was my daughter who said, um, literally, she said. Uh, she was like getting, you know, crap or something like that. And I, and she goes, what do you know about it? You're Tommy. I go, everybody loves you. And I went, wow. Oh, I said, I know. And I said, it, it's very, very easy to be me. I said, you're right. I said, I said, come here. I said, I said, let's go to YouTube. And you know, there's thousands of videos of me playing on YouTube or whatever. And I said, I'm going to scroll my finger and you stop it wherever you want on whatever video. So it doesn't matter. And she goes, bam, all right, we stopped. I said, good. I said, let's take a look at that one. It has about 250 comments, right? And I said, let's take a look at the comments, right? Now, I, it's not my video, somebody else. I don't, I don't, I don't I have no idea what we're going to see. I have no idea. I don't know the video. I don't know the comments. But I do know that there will be somebody on there saying that I suck, have no business playing the drums, and I should hang it up. Because humans, that's why, all right? So I said, let's start reading them. First one's like, ah, oh, Tommy rocks. Mm, Tommy's great. Mm, mm. Tommy sucks so bad. I can't believe he's even here. Why doesn't he go die under a rock? Right? And, I, and, so she, and she looked at it and she went, and I went, I said, how about that? She goes, well, that's just one person. I said, well, let's keep going. <laughs> you know, 10 comments down. God, this guy sucks so bad. He looks like a big giraffe on a eating a peanut butter bag or something like that. And, but I, and she was just like, yeah. I'm like, uh-huh. I said, yeah. I said, now, I said, let's name your favorite artist of all time. I said, and she said, I don't know. Let's just pick an artist that like she loves. Like, say Beyonce. Right? Yeah. And, it goes, and she goes, well, so why is Beyonce? And she goes, and I said, everybody loves Beyonce, right? Right? And she goes, well, duh, yeah. And she goes, doo, 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 doo. I said, let's go. Let's see. Let's see how long it takes to find somebody who just can't wait to hate. And I went, boom. I said, I said, and I, and she goes, that isn't even. They're not even talking about the video. They're just talking about like her, like not even what they're seeing. I said, exact. And it was starting to get on her. Right. I like I said, I said, yeah. I said, and everybody's entitled to their opinion. I said, and and she goes, doesn't it bother you? And I said, no. I said, I, because I said, this is, I asked for it. <laughs> I asked for it. I said, if you create and you share, you ask for it. Hmm. Okay. Now that's, that's the truth. If you create and you share, you ask for it. Okay. Now that's the truth. Now let's talk about social media in general. Okay. So I only participate in personal page based social media. Right, Instagram, and Facebook, right? Because I am curating those pages. I am building them. I consider them digital houses on, that I've built. You built your digital house. Yours is yours is Jasmine's. That's your house. You built it. You built it, and you build it every day. And every day you're adding a floor. Every single day, and it's your house. When we talk about social media, and we talk about, and you know. Here's the, here's the thing is that 95% of everybody is totally cool. And you run a page, you have more people than you do on my, than my page. 
how many are you up to now? How many hundreds of thousands? 138 or something? Yeah, I'm at um, 70. So it's like we have a we have a good we have a good test pool to draw from. Yeah. Yeah, we have a good yeah, we have a, enough to play with, right? To so get a thing. And as you know, by far and away, the majority of people are totally cool. 100 percent Like they're awesome, awesome people, right? But that's not what we're talking about. Okay. We're talking about your name at the top or your curate. Now, mine says my name is on the top. It's my thing, all right? And what happened, what has been happening in social media, and I don't know, I don't like any, I am not going to get into politics, but I do know that we had a, a shift at the top in the United States in terms of who's running the place, and I am seeing a change in demeanor online. I do believe that everything flows from the top. I believe, I've always believed that, Okay. And you could not have have you could not have a different leader at the top than with the one that we had in terms of restraint, class, and using social media in a different way. That's all I'm going to say. So as we're moving forward from 2016 to where we are now, which is in 2020, around 2018, I'm starting to see a change. I'm starting to see more poison, more direct toxic. I'm seeing. I'm seeing more uh, people coming into my house who aren't using their real name and have, you know, drum dick 66, you know, whatever, and that's their handle. And, they're, and it's a private account. They don't have any, they have nothing to show. They don't do any business. It's just uh, coming in and poison and run, hitting poison, run, poison, run, you know. There's no, they're not staying for community. They're not supporting anybody else. They're not talking to anyone else. They're coming in, they're shit posting, and then they're leaving. All right. I'm seeing more and more of that. I'm also seeing more uh, sexist comments uh, with a, a girl who will play drums or a young woman, uh, depending on the age, um, and they will uh, uh, sexualize her body rather than listening to the music that they're playing. I'm seeing that more and more and more. I'm seeing uh, uh, young uh, boys and young men um, uh, who are playing, and I'll post something from them, and they maybe are not strong yet, and they don't hit necessarily strong yet they don't have a strong sound yet and they will use a sexual a sexually derogatory term to call that person loud and proud in front of everyone in my house now i'm going to say that again they are doing that in my house it's my house and no one has any membership is free you have one rule, don't be an asshole. That's it. That's all you gotta do, don't be an asshole. And if you come in and you do that, and you basically, it's the metaphor of like you coming in, dropping your pants and, and pooping on the floor in my house. If you did that in real life, you'd be gone. And if you do it in my social media house, you're gone. One strike. Now, it's taken me a while to get there. And I, the, the reason people are talking to, uh, about it now is because there was an inflection push. Should I continue on? Am I talking too much? Yeah, no, this is great. This is great, Tom. This is exactly what I want to hear. The, re the reason I'm doing this is because I want people to, and I started a hashtag called Your Page, Your Rules. Your Page, Your Rules. And it caught fire. There's a lot of people. A lot of people have changed the way they, they insist on decorum in their house. When I started this campaign, it was exactly a year ago, by the way. People were very resistant to like, they're like, well, I don't want to lose a follower. I don't want to lose a fan. And who am I to say, who, who am I to say like what they can say? And I'm like, what happened to us? Yeah. What happened to us? Especially now, like with everything that's going on with, you know, Black Lives Matter, George Floyd, all these things that are happening. Or something like right now it's a very good point it's a great time to talk about this because now it's like we have this giant mirror that we're faced to look in we have to look at it and it's happening right now history is being made and if somebody comes in and spots some neo-nazi bullshit on your page are you going to freaking try to talk them down out of that tree are you kidding those those listen those those thoughts are baked before they came in and I don't run racist rehab in my house. I am not in any way trying to like, it's like, well, why don't you engage with them? I was like, are you kidding? Where do you start with Hitler was right? 
where do you start? Yeah. There's no place to start. And I am not pretending that there is. And I do not even pretend that I have the power or the knowledge or the intelligence to try to spin these guys back down to where they are even human again. Mm -hmm. I can't even try because I did and it doesn't work. And then what I happened was like, when I engage with someone like that, they start mob sourcing friends and then they start using my page as a point to start to. Been there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, so that happens a lot with young men. So I did a, uh, so in 2019, I did a, um, um, a bit of, I threw a grenade into my social media, which is for, I did a 10 week experiment. I didn't tell anybody I was doing it. So what happened was I put up, uh, uh, we were doing a, I think we were doing a tribute to somebody or something like that. And they, and these, what I found out were just, they're all boys. These are all boys, like young boys. Yeah. And they come in and they just like light my page on fire. Like, cause they don't like whoever, whatever is going on. They don't like it. And it's like, and I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, they organized outside on a Reddit page or something like that. And they said, let's go here and light it up. And, I, and I'm, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, this is actually happening. And now people are starting to say, like, wow, like, like what's he going to do? Meaning me. What am I going to do? All right. And I realized that, like, there is, there was nobody. And I couldn't believe it. I took a really, it, it was like I woke up. I had this moment. Oh, we can talk about that later. Where educationally, I, I had an epiphany about 2013-14 about where I called myself a fraud mm. educationally and because I, I was being called all these things as like cutting-edge teacher, or, you know, blah, 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 all these best-selling books, he's changing the way we're job, blah, blah. And I looked in the mirror and I was just like, you are none of those things. You are, you're a fraud. And I blew up my teaching practice and that's when I became cutting-edge from that moment. Because I could not look at myself in a mirror anymore and hear those things that people were saying about me and listen to them and think they were right in any way whatsoever because they were all wrong. Mm. I was a fraud. And then I, when I had that moment, that's when everything really changed for me educationally and where I'm at now. So I had that same kind of epiphany in 2019. I looked in the mirror. And I was like, man, you are doing it all over again. You are a fraud. There is no one leading. Nobody. And that was when I started this 10 week experiment and I started amplifying their hate, broadcasting it, seeing what happened, started banning people, deleting them. And, and there was this gigantic backlash. And again, all young boys, young, you know, uh, beginning college, high school, and they had a absolute fit. And I had, and I, I didn't tell anybody I was doing this. I just did it because I wanted the raw data. And the, by raw data, I wanted to find out who these people were, all right? Mm. And basically what I found out was that these were children without adult supervision. Mm. I talked to them on the phone. They actually called me. I said, I need to talk to you. I said, some of the worst offenders. I said, you can star 66, whatever. So I said, I said, I said, I said will you let me talk? And they were like, yeah. So, and, they were, and I found out 14 years old, 15 years old, 16 years old. That's, those are the people who are coming in. And, and every, and it was, I, I couldn't, I, it was eye opening to me. Yeah. I had, I started to understand what was going on. And I was like, okay, basically what we need is, it's like, you know, we need a, a man to act like a man and say, this is no, absolutely not, not here. Mm -hmm. You can go do that. I can't stop you from screenshotting and saying anything you want about me, but you will not disrespect this house and that's all it took yeah. now we're one year later and i lost about five thousand people and this is going to tie a bow around the story for everybody hearing me so they can listen to the ending of this story and do it yourself i lost five thousand people and i gained 30. i mean there it is those yeah. five thousand people who split and left i don't hold any any animosity towards them at all they i want them happy i want them to be where they should be and they should not be following me and then those other thirty thousand people who came in they want that positivity they want that space where they know that that crap is not going to be tolerated yeah. and that all it is is making the choice make the choice 
moderate your house. You deserve respect in your house. Everybody listening to me right now, you deserve respect in your house. You deserve it. You, you deserve it. All you got to do is claim it. Amen. I, I, man, you're preaching to the choir. We've been there and, and it just, it's actually so relieving to hear that other people out there uh, have gone through that. And man, I haven't even talked to anyone about that who can understand on that level what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's, it's 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 a thing and what i want to try to do is like just like i'm sure your story i'd love to hear what happened with you guys too um is like it's we have to talk about what's going on now the advice and i'm gonna can i say one more thing on this just to tie it up as I go right ahead we're free the adv i'm gonna say another thing and i hope everybody's really listening to me the advice that they have given us is wrong the advice that they have given us is wrong when they say Ignore the trolls. It just makes them stronger. The advice they've given us is wrong. Mm. The reason they exist is because we ignore them. And if we can, listen, we live jazz, drums, small families, small, small, and everybody talks, small families. And who, what kind of stewards are we if we don't respect ourselves enough to ma manage our pages? What do you think our mentors and the, the gods who came before us, the giants, the giants whose shoulders we're standing upon, what would they think of us? Yeah. Not very much. No, would Not it, very much at all. Would they, have, would they have allowed someone to walk up to them and say anything that these trolls would say, walk up literally every day and say to us right and we just say and people, oh, right. they, exactly 100 percent. and to people who say well this isn't real life i uh, i i reject that because social media is now becoming such an ingrained part of ourselves that our brains are becoming re rewired to think this is real life and if you don't believe me look at the data my wife is a high school administrator she sees, and she's on the ground, she's, man, she is the troops on the ground. She is, she is on the beach at Normandy. She mm -hmm. is, she is seeing what is happening as the incoming freshmen come in, and she is seeing the changes that are happening to them, which each incoming class and how it's changing, changing small humans. Yeah. It is changing all of us. And I told my daughter the other day, I said, look, I said, we're the test case. I said, we, all of us, we are all the test case for this. I said, but especially you. And I said, and in 15 years, you'll be 30. Mm -hmm. And the data will be in. And I said, and I don't think it's going to be really pretty. I said, we're going to, I said, we're, you have to be really, really cognizant of what this is doing to you. You got to know what this is doing to you. Yeah. Be cognizant, be aware. I think what I think you're talking well, and what you're saying is it's becoming so habitual that it's harder and harder to have that awareness because it's not even considered a separate act. Like I go to my instrument and then now it's, I'm in that mode. It's like, no, 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 this is like within probably two feet of me at every moment of the entire day, 24 seven. So what, how are you going to be aware of it as a separate thing? I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> no, I no, that, not that any of us have to It's a great, it's, you know, these are the questions when I say the data is going to come in, it's going to come in. Yeah. You know, we're going to see, uh, you know, we're, we've already seen data that it's harder for young people to form in person relationships. We're seeing, we're, we're seeing this data that's coming in that people are having a hard time making an in person connection, you know, because this thing is the connection, you know, and, and listen, there's nothing wrong at all, as I keep saying over and over again. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with kids today. I say this all the time. This is not some, like, you know, get off my lawn moment from an old guy. That's not it. I work with kids every day. This is what I do, you know? And there's nothing wrong with kids today. Absolutely nothing. So if there's a kid listening to this and you think they're saying, I'm saying there's something wrong with you, I'm not at all. What I'm saying is this is powerful. What I'm saying is that this is affecting everyone, not just you, but everyone. But you are a kid. 
and you're 15, 16, 17, 18. This is having a different impact on you than it is having on someone like me because you're at the beginning of your journey yeah. and your brain is still forming and your front temporal lobe is not done yet and your decision-making process is not finished yet. Listen, to all the little punks who have screwed around on my page and every other page and said crap that like, it, it, look, look, I feel nothing but sympathy because I am just so absolutely grateful that this was not around when I was a kid because I can't even imagine what I would have said. Yeah. I can't even imagine like some, like in the heat of a moment, you probably would have gone spew, you know, like, and you just say, and, and it's because you're not, you don't have control. You don't have control of yourself. You're not let's, Listen, this is why they let 23-year-old men and women fly F-16s, but they don't let them decide what to shoot at. The generals who are 60 yeah. years old give them the targets, they, but they don't. The, those old men can't fly the F-16 because they need right. those cat-like reflexes. But there's a reason why mentors and students need each other. There's a reason why. There is a reason why, and we're seeing it literally on social media. Mentors, students, we need each other. We make things better together. Well, I think we're kind of circling around some really important stuff. And one of the things that can kind of tie this all together is what we talked about earlier about you having such an important mentor for, as your, your father. And then talking about the power of the internet. And I mean, I've learned firsthand over the last five years just how if, if you had told me where we'd be today with memes, no one would believe that you could do it. But I think that what we're trying to, what I think we can do and what you try and do and what we, we try and do with Jasmine is, is use it for the right things. Use it to push the right values and right ideas. So for the yeah. young musicians out there who didn't have the opportunity to grow up with a good mentor, um, maybe they're post-college and they need that mentor more than ever now when they don't have guidance, especially with the ability to contact pretty much anyone in the world you want at some level, what do you think Basically, how should one go about getting a good mentor in their life if they don't have one? Because maybe they're recognizing, you know what, you're right, both for playing and for just guidance, I need a mentor to help me get, you know, to grow up. Do you have recommendations yeah, on how to reach out to well, them? It, well, yeah, I do. Uh, that's a great, great question, by the way. And I don't think, you know, mentorship is, you know, a lot of things, a lot of people think it's like, well, you know, I had three main mentors in my life. Okay. And they all, you know, two, let's see, two have passed already. One is still with us. And they, everything I do, it was, they live through me. Okay. Now I was lucky. One of them was, not, one of the three was my dad. I was lucky. All right. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, but a lot of sons have good fathers who were mentors and stuff and they learned good values. So I'm certainly not any kind of, I'm not, you know, special in that regard. Um, but, uh, you know, some people come from really crappy home lives. Let's be honest. Some people have to really, uh, they have to break away from their families, find autonomy and reset their values. Okay. So I just put up a quote the other day, um, you know, you, uh, from CS Lewis, and this is something that I, I really hope everybody hears my voice right now. And I didn't write this CS Lewis, did, but he's, and, he's, um, you can't change the beginning but you can start where you are now and change the ending. And that's, that's mentorship. That's what it is right there. When you open yourself to this, so mentorship means that you, you really do surrender your ego to somebody you're looking at and say, I, I want that. I want that. I want to learn that. Whatever that is, it doesn't matter what it is, but that, you know, and I was always attracted to men of strength and honor and who, well, I mean, all three were educators, you know, all, they were different kinds of educators, but they were all educators. And cause that's what I gravitated to. And I met them in person. So this is where I'm going with my story. All right. I had relationships with them and, and through those, through that meeting, I got close to them. And I never said, I want you to mentor me. I went and I learned from them. I was a student, you know? So becoming, 
so say you're post college, all right, and you're now this happens a lot. This happens way too much, by the way. Um, guys get their degree, they may even get their graduate degree, and there's no more school. School's done, and it's like now what? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, and you know, gigs aren't maybe aren't coming, and it's just like you know, you don't have a you don't have a class a class to go to at 9 a.m. or whatever. It's like, and it's like the hard realization has hit, and the loans are there too. So um, it, it's a it could be a rough time actually for a lot of guys when they get out of school if they don't have their if they don't have like a gig on lockdown or some kind of like an entry ramp or then they haven't done their most important thing, which is something that we never talk enough about uh, in, uh, in school environments is uh, networking and relationships. Uh, because this entire business is now is built and it always will be it's built on relationships. So a prime example is me and you right now, me and you, we now have a relationship, me and you. And I love it. And I'm going to nurture this relationship because I Same love here. what you do. And yeah, right. Exactly. So it's like, so we have now a new, so I am considering this, not just a, you know, an interview or whatever like that, but I have a new friend and a new relationship and I'm going to nurture that relationship because this entire business is about relationships, you know? And if you say like on social media, you know, you're throwing people out and stuff like that. And you're like, how can you call that about relationships? I was like, because I'm not a doormat and I don't want relationships with everyone. I, I want relationships with good, solid people who do good, solid things and have something to offer me and me something back and offer to the world. And I'm going to form that relationship. One day I might be able to do you a favor. And one day I'm going to call you for an interview on my show. That's how we're going to pay it forward. We go back and forth and we do that. And we're going to do that. And I'm telling you right now, I'm calling you, you're going to do that, you know? Yeah. And that's going to happen. So, you know, relationships, relationships, relationships. So if I was going to find a mentor, if I found myself adrift and I wanted to go into the music business and I was trying to be either a player or a teacher, say there's one or the other, player or teacher, and make a, just for right now, put a line between the two, all right? I would, if I was going to, I mean, I'd be, I'd be going to gigs and trying to, and going to see people I respected and I would form relationships with them. Because being having a men, having a mentor is having a relationship. Finding a mentor is about starting a relationship. It's not going to the yellow pages and going to mentor.com. Become finding a mentor is about starting a relationship. That means you have to get off your ass and go find them. And if you're in, in an education, say you want to be a great teacher, well, I would find the best music programmer. Well, say you're like go to the best high school music program in your area the one that's kicking ass everywhere and you go and you find a rehearsal and you go and introduce yourself and you say can i just watch whatever like that say and you'll usually find a, a a totally receptive awesome person who is more than willing to bring you into his relationships or their her relationships and you get off your ass and go where the people are that's the biggest thing about finding a mentor you have to put in the groundwork to find the people who will help you yeah. Well, I, 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 exactly. And it's not treating people, like you said, like, it's not like there's a yellow pages or I'm just going to use this person to get the thing I need and then move on. You're, you're really talking about developing relationships for a lifetime and treating, I mean, that human to human connection. It's, it's, it's going back to, you know, get off the internet and, and treat it real, like real life. Uh, like, yeah. But, you know, flip, on the flip side of that, you've become a mentor for so many. Right. And even not even people that you necessarily have day to day interaction with in person, but through your channels, you've been doing a lot of education. You've done it for many years through your books and, and, and all your videos and all that stuff. But I did want to talk about what is most recently, especially with all of the uh, COVID quarantine and everything, you've been doing this I go challenge. I, I wanted to see if you talk about why did you start that? I mean, you're busy. You got a lot of things you could be doing with your time, especially when you get a bunch of free time all of a sudden. Why dedicate that time to that challenge, and what is that? You know, it's funny. I just post, I'm, uh, it's, uh, I just put up a post about this file yesterday. You probably haven't seen it yet, so I'd be glad to tell you right now because it's actually um, – I got asked this question. So um, we're up to day 88 of the challenge, 88 straight days without a miss, 88. And we're going – we're stopping at 100, okay, because mm -hmm. people – I said, I'm going to keep this going. 
until I see the world start to open a little bit and people are opening. We're starting to see, I just had a rehearsal here the other day with actual human beings. Yeah, I got a gig tonight, so we're, we're getting there. <laughs> I know, it's like, it's actually, I was like, let me tell you, and I told this story too on Instagram. I told this story too on my Instagram. Um, uh, I told the story where uh, the first rehearsal uh, I, I would think it was like, it was like 90. I haven't played with musicians in over 90 days. I don't think, and I was like, I don't think I've ever got through my entire life. Like, I can't imagine not having a, uh, uh, having a 90 day period where I didn't make music with musicians. Like, I don't think that's ever happened to me ever. Right. And I, and we, so we got in the room, right. And we're like, ah, you know, we're like yeah, excited. And, man. Right. Uh, and I, I stopped. I mean, stop. And I'm just like, and I don't mean, my chops are fine. My chops are good. I've been doing shredding. I mean, shredding all the way. I'm talking about music, mm -hmm. reflexes, communication. It was like, like I had been buried in the earth for 90 days. And all of a sudden I came out, I'm like a zombie. And I'm like, you know, like, I'm not like my senses weren't on at all. Like, like, and we all felt it. It was just like knocking the rust off mm -hmm. of, you know, mostly knocking the rust off of this, yep. you know? So like, I was just like, man, I was like, like, I could feel like, like somebody would play a lick. And I'd be, oh man, I want to get in on some of that. And I'd be like, and it'd be already gone. And I'd be like, hey, hey, give me that, you know? And I was like, and it's already, and I'm like, wow, that's how, like, so it reminded me of like, um, when you talk to like professional athletes and the difference between gym shape and game shape, mm. you know, there's such a difference between gym shape and game shape. And I was in gym shape, been working by myself on it. And I'm like, I get on a kit. I'm like, all right, let's, let's start. And I'm like, I don't have my game shop, but the beautiful thing about it, the next day we came back again, it was so much better. So then we played again yesterday and it was even better. So my game is coming back. It's just like, but what a, what a splash of cold water. Wow. That, I was so like bummed out after those guys left that first day. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, but see, it's, gone. it's yeah. gone forever. I'm sucking forever now. It's, my life is ruined. <laughs> but that's what I was talking about at the beginning. Like you didn't just have that moment and just wallow in, in, in yourself only. What I mean is like, I, I, I saw the video. You, you decided, you know what? This is important. I, everyone, more people are having this experience and I'm going to, I'm not just, I'm going to voice it because someone's got to call it out for what it's happening. And you got online and you told everyone that you sucked in that moment, but that's real. And that's what I mean by when I say like, you're honest about, what you're going through your struggles and i think that's what people appreciate is that up or down it's still all in a frame of hey we're just growing we're just i'm 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 just as human as the next guy doing that and that's There's what i'm not talking enough about guys doing there are, there are not enough guys doing that and that's what I, when you said it uh you know it's the one thing that people say is, is like you know you're not like your page is extraordinary on or my page is honest and and there's no bullshit and and that's what i mean by that there's social media there's way too many people putting up versions of themselves leading their perfect life or having their perfect moment and it's a, it's all about ego all right mm -hmm. and uh you know some people misunderstand my confidence like my confidence in being able to throw people out and they think that like oh what a big ego he has right. and they <laughs> it's the exact opposite my ego is actually showing strength when I tell you how badly I suck, because mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to tell you, mm -hmm. because that's part of the package. That's part of the package. If you don't embrace when you suck, how are you supposed to actually know when you play great? And that moment, I, the reason I told everybody that I suck is because I was like, oh man, a lot of people are going to probably have this moment too. I was not expecting it. I tell you the guy, I swear to God, I swear, I thought I was going to sit down. You're like, I'm doing the stuff like, every I day. Like, I thought fire is going to come. <laughs> my God, man, here it comes, right? I was like, and I was like, uh. <laughs> this was like vomit. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like this horrible, this mess. It was just sucked. Oh, God, 
it's like it, literally i felt i swear to god it's like you're playing shit and, you know you hear a lick and you're like respond like little thing it's like I, you know like if you're on a basketball court and you're like playing defense right and you're like got this guy you're doing a little one-on-one right i got you i got you i got you and he just goes and he's like what and, and you're still facing this way and he's already at the back yeah, that's 10 seconds ago yeah so it's like he's already, he's already, and you still haven't even spun around. That's what I felt like. Yeah. I felt like my feet were in cement. I was completely paralyzed, and and it was. Uh, that's why I shared it. I wanted people. I wanted. I wanted people to know. So just to circle back to what your original question was, uh, you know, mentoring or um, you know the influence my pages on. So uh, you know, a lot of people, and I'm very grateful and. Uh, that when they say this, that like, you know, I'm mentoring them online or something like that. I want to make sure that people understand the difference between mentoring and a good example. Because online, all I'm doing is providing a good example. Or I'm trying to. I'm uh, just providing a good example. Mentorship is a completely different level mm-hmm. of connection. Mentorship is different. Online, I'm providing a good example. And, I'm pro- I'm, and I mean that, a deep, good example. But mentorship is a is is a much more personal one-on-one connection where you have to go deep with a with a mentor to find out their motivation and how they can actually apply it to their own personal lives. So I want to make sure everybody understands that difference between mentorship and a good example, because I don't want anyone to shortchange themselves thinking that I'm mentoring or anybody else is mentoring them on by following an account online. That is not being mentored. That's just following a good example. Okay, so mentorship requires much more sweat, blood, guts, commitment on both sides of the equation, and it has to be in person. Yeah, no, that, that's true. But you, but you're providing that good example every day. To yeah, to- I try. Yeah, I, it's important. It's a, it's important. But the mentorship thing is like, you know, that's that's this. That's like you know, a mentor is going to challenge you. A mentor is not going to make you feel good about yourself. A mentor, you're going to want to kill your mentors. Yeah. You're going to want to kill them. You, it, yeah. That's how you know you have a mentorship. You want to murder your mentor, okay? Because your mentors are going to push you. They're going to find your buttons. They're going to question you. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to make you think about the uncomfortable stuff that you haven't yet resolved. Mm-hmm. That's what they're going to do. That's what a mentor does. And then when you get out of that, that's when the promise, like, that's when the sun is shining. You come to the end of that equation and the mentor will be waiting for you there mm. in the sun. But until you're there, the mentor is going to be making your life. He's going to, he's going to force you to do the deep dive to get you to where you need to be. Yeah, that's true. Well, I wanted to touch back on something you kind of pinned earlier. Uh, Cause I, I, I just have to ask, what do you mean when you said, uh, you looked in the mirror and you realized you were a fraud. Oh, uh, so uh, on the jazz cruise in 2014, I, uh, I think it was 14, 13, um, uh, they were doing interviews with the, all the artists and stuff. And, um, and this guy was talking about um, education. And cause I guess he was a teacher. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and he was asking me all the stuff and he was praising and saying all these like really, really nice things. And, 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 I just reminded, and I didn't have any intention of telling the story because I kind of did, it was kind of personal, you know, and I, when I did, when I had this epiphany, I didn't broadcast it. I just changed my shit, you know, mm-hmm. I just wasn't like, you know, like, you know, to, to, to talk about it at that moment would have been, seemed very self-indulgent and self-congratulatory. And that's the opposite of what the story is. The stop, the story is not about, uh, 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 self-congratulation. The story is about self-reflection, about how you have to do a deep dive to find out whether or not you're living a life of authenticity. Because remember when we started? Remember when we started on this page uh, at the beginning of this interview? Remember when we started this? Mm-hmm. We talked about you, you brought up uh, your values. Yeah. Okay. And to me, I run my page on based on my core values, and I, I, and when everybody does that when you decide what your core non-negotiable core values what your core values are and when you're willing to stand behind them with your name and live them that's when we're all going to see social media elevate at that point so you have to find everybody has to find their own individual non-negotiable core values and 
one of mine is um, uh, truth. And truth was like, he was saying all these to- uh, things and then I told him the story and then it kind of went, it kind of blew up a little bit. People were talking about it. And the, what happened was I looked in the mirror and he was saying all these things, the cutting edge. He was saying uh, revolutionary um, uh, about me as an educator. Okay? And I had had a lot of success at that point. I had, you know, you know, I wrote these groundbreaking texts and da da da, changed the game and that kind of stuff. But none of the things he was saying was true. Uh, at that when before this, and I, I told him, like I said, I did a deep dive, and I, because all I was doing was pushing the can down the road. Okay, as up until I had this epiphany, I was just doing. All I was doing was teaching the shit I was taught. Mm-hmm. That's what most teachers do. Yeah, that's well, yeah. It won't work for me, so I'm a, I'm a success. So I'm just gonna teach you that shit. I was a complete. That's when I said, "That's what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing? All I'm doing is taking the same shit and just like it's like that's not that's." That's the opposite of education. That's lazy. It's just lazy. It's all it's doing is making me feel better about the shit I was taught. That was my deep dive. That's when I said, you're a fraud. You need to train students for the music business and the music world that's awaiting them. Mm. Not the one that's awaiting, that was awaiting you. You need to up your game and make everything that you do relevant for a young student of today, not just because you suffered through a whole bunch of classical snare drum shit that they're never going to see in their whole damn life, that I suffered through it, that I'm going to now, it's like I suffered through it, so now you're going to have to suffer through it. That is a crappy way to run an educational facility. So I went down and I did a deep dive on every single thing, went through every single text, and I threw out a lot of sacred cows, and um, and I flipped my classroom too. Uh, so I'm very, I was very much inspired by a guy named Sal Khan, um, the guy who runs Khan Academy, yeah, who's a, a bazillion times smarter than I'll ever be, and I was just could not believe how uh, elegant and new his teaching delivery was and i said that's it right there i said that he's my mentor <laughs> and i took that and i was like there it is you know so i flipped my classroom a lot of the work that i would have them do here i then had them do at home hmm. and a lot of stuff that they were doing at home i would have them do here and it has changed everything for me as far as my uh, educational now I'm now I'm comfortable getting complimented because I don't feel like I'm a fraud. <laughs> I'm actually making a contribution to hopefully elevate the game a little bit. So that was that that was what I meant and how I came out the other side feeling better. Yeah, you got in tune with it. Just made you take a deep look at what you actually were doing and bringing that awareness to your teaching and realizing, oh wait, I don't have the the con the deep awareness about why I'm even doing what I'm doing that way. No. If I could not explain it, I saw what you just said is perfect, by the way. Everything you just said is right on the money. And I I uh, I if I couldn't explain why I was teaching it mm-hmm. to a student of today, it was out. Mm-hmm. It had to have relevance. It has to have relevance. Now if a student wants uh, listen, when a student gets us to a certain level, if I got like a real player in here, you know, somebody who's going to who wants to go deep and is like thirsty. Like there are some kids that come in here and I'm like kind of like freaked out because it's hard for me to keep up. Right. Like they're thirsty. Thirsty, thirsty. Give, 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 give. They just want input. Like I just, I have to keep like just providing input because they just keep absorbing it so fast. You know, those are the students that Oh like, yeah, yeah. You're shedding before they even show up. You're like, oh my God, if I don't shed. Yeah, they're like, you know, so uh, like that's, and those students are, you know, they're rare and they're great, you know? And I'm like, okay, this is like, I can't like, like as soon as I like feed, like I call them little, little animals because they come in and they eat, they just eat information. They eat it and they're gone and then they're more, <laughs> you know, they're like, 
So I'm like, you know, you got to be ready for those. You got to be ready for those thirsty, those thirsty little animals that come in and they just like their brains are just like, and it's so great to like, to, you know, uh, expose them to a piece of music. So that's the one thing about like Spotify or like, I hate, I hate streaming and what it does also, but, um, uh, but it's here and it's, it's, it's silly to even talk about it. Um, so uh, it's part of every kid's life. So I'll tell, like, say I, a uh, kid comes in and, uh, uh, introduce them to Snarky Puppy or something like that, okay? And you know, they probably already know about Snarky, but because Snarky's everywhere. But they come in, and I'm like, all right. I'm like, now I said, let's start up the radio, and like, you know, and let's just listen. And then we start discovering like all these new artists that are based on the Snarky radio, mm. you know. And there's all these, and then they come in the next week with like ten artists that they have questions about, and I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, and you're like, uh, what, who's that? <laughs> I'm like, uh, can we, I'm not sure who that is. Can we, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, listen together. Uh, listen together. Yeah. 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 At three minutes and 16 seconds, there's a th inverted 30 second note slam a And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Look Oh my God. Real what teaching have I done? Skills. How can you maintain the frame of teacher when you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, I think, uh, am I supposed to be paying you now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's great. It's it's really really great because those uh, the you know those thirsty minds that come in. It's like you know that's one of the great things that flipping my classroom has done. It it gives us for students like that. It gives us way more time to talk about music mm -hmm. instead of rigor. Yeah. So rigor is like we get into like you know rigor can suck up like a, a whole lot of time, and that's what they do that at home. Now we can talk about music here. It's done. It's done wonders to my classroom. Well, I think that's something we all should incorporate. I, 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 I'm a teacher and I, I'd love to incorporate more of that in the way I teach. I'm a pianist, so the way I teach uh, keys. Um, sure. I, I, we've covered so much and, and I just honestly appreciate so much. Of, you're so giving with your time, Tommy. Uh, I, before we go, though, I wanted to touch on what you just said. Especially, you said a lot of this in 2013 about the relevance and about you know drummers, the issues they, that drummers are having in the modern time, but you were saying that in 2013. What are the things, and it doesn't have to be drum specific, but what are the things you think and see that we should as educators maybe be, or what are we not being honest about? What is the current environment that they should be ready for that's different than what maybe we as educators had? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is it that you're seeing is like, the thing that are the new skills, the new areas that they should really be on their game for, for the real environment they're coming into. Maybe not something that's like this current time, but in the modern sense. So the number one thing, I'll leave everybody with this. The number one thing is um, uh, everybody is a studio owner now. Mm -hmm. Everybody. I am, you are, we all own a studio. And that could be your bedroom. You have to be technologically savvy current. You don't have to, you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to mix, you know, the next Snarky Puppy record. That's not what I'm saying. But you do need to be able to record yourself. You do need to be able to converse and collaborate remotely. And uh, that is a huge thing. So usually when, especially when I talk to jazz, um, uh, jazz people, uh, they, you know, they want to hear more instrument based answers and i reject that because we have a we have a lot of great instrument material already what we need to do was work on the mindset of create of empowering young young students to believe and know that they are studio owners mm -hmm. because that's the future that's where it's at that's the, that's the present actually Everybody needs to be able to record themselves with video and audio. And this is, so let me ask you a question. What is this thing? Everybody's going to say a cell phone. Okay. The cell phone. No, it's not. This is the number one most amazing music education and, and social media marketing device ever created for you and for your brand. And what I mean, your brand is your name. So you're a kid, you play saxophone, you're 14 years old, right? You're, 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 you're music obsessed, like, just like we were, I'm sure when you were a kid, I was obsessed. So when you're now in 2020, when you're 14 years old, he says, you need to be able to, you have to start with the idea of being able to create and create in your studio. Okay. Now the beautiful thing about what I'm saying is that it is absolutely obscene what a person can get now for 
like so little money, like it, and I'm talking about incredible quality to record yourself and collaborate online. The reason I'm talking about this is because that is where so many young people are going to make their first relationships. Mm. Their first relationship that that they like instead of like meeting like I my first one of my first when I went all state in New Jersey or I won region in New Jersey so I made relationships or something like that but these kids are going to make relationships online with other fourteen year old kids they have to be able to document their playing and collaborate online they have to be aggressive and social and go out and make those connections. So while we're working with the student about actually playing and being able to play and understanding music and doing the rigor and understanding theory and harmony and ear training and the past and history, we must discuss the present on how they are going to form their relationships because it's the most important thing of all. I think you're 100% correct and you lead by example. So Tommy, thanks so much. Uh, I mean, you've given us so much great information that I think our audience will be digesting. Uh, it's, it's a lot, but I, I appreciate everything. I appreciate you coming on the show. I know our jazz Memes family really does appreciate as well. And I can't wait to get this out there to them. Uh, I appreciate you and I appreciate you, your account. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure to uh, re gram you and uh, uh, spread the, spread the word about the funny crap you guys do. And, and also, also, the uh, positive energy behind it. So, uh, right. so my uh, my uh, my most uh, uh, sincere gratitude to you guys for being able to make us laugh at ourselves, but in a way that's with a smile instead of a smirk. Hey Amen. We're all we're all here to do the same thing. I, I I believe. I think we're all here to just connect with others and spread our music or our our mission. So, Tommy, thanks so much. I know we'll be working together very soon. I'm sure, and uh, we'll keep I'm developing. Gonna get you. I, you're going to be on mine. You're on mine next. Hey, we're cut. I'll be. We'll be there. We'll be there. But uh, thank you guys so much. And until next time, thanks, Tommy. See you, man. Bye, bye. Take care. Bye.